Welcome to our channel. This video is part of a series based on the CITB book called Health, Safety and Environment Test for Operatives and Specialists. We guarantee that watching these videos is all you need to do to prepare for your final test. In each video, we will briefly cover a section's key points and then ask questions directly from the CITB book. This video focuses on section 6, Dust and Fumes. To make it easy to move through the video series, you will find a link in the top right corner. The actual CSCS test usually takes about 45 minutes, and you need to answer at least 45 out of 50 questions correctly to pass. Before we dive in, please support us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate it. Let us learn together. Harmful dust is often invisible to the naked eye. Breathing in harmful dust can cause life-shortening illnesses. Breathing in construction dust can result in occupational lung diseases, such as asthma and silicosis. Face-fit testing should be carried out as part of the initial selection of RPE. A face-fit test will ensure that your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, fits and functions properly. Wearing your RPE will help to prevent you from breathing in harmful dust and fumes. RPE will only be effective if it fits the wearer's face properly. An on-tool extraction system is a method of dust control. Fumes will build up very quickly in a confined space. Carbon monoxide is a colourless, odourless, poisonous gas. Sparks or naked flames can easily ignite flammable vapours. You have been asked to do some work that will create dust. What should you do? You should not do the work because dust is highly dangerous. Start the work. No controls are needed as dust cannot cause serious harm or injury. Work for short periods at a time. Regular breaks will reduce the amount of dust you breathe in. Use equipment to eliminate or reduce the dust and wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. If someone is using a petrol cut-off saw, disc cutter, to cut concrete blocks near to pedestrians, what two immediate hazards will affect the pedestrians? Harmful dust, an electric shock, flying fragments, contact dermatitis, vibration white finger. What is the main cause of long-term health issues in the construction industry? Slipping and tripping. Exposure to loud noise. Being struck by a vehicle. Breathing in hazardous dust and fumes. Where are you likely to be exposed to the highest quantities of dust when drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding? Inside a small room. Inside a large space. Outside on a still day. Outside on a windy day. What is the best way to limit exposure to dust when using a power tool? Do the work quickly. Stop dust getting into the air. Stand downwind of any dust. Use the tool during wet weather. Which of the following activities does not create harmful silica dust? Sawing timber or plywood. Cutting curbs, stone, paving slabs, bricks and blocks. Breaking up concrete floors and screeds. Chasing out walls and mortar joints or sweeping up rubble. After asbestos, which of the following causes the most ill health to construction workers? Wood and MDF dust. Diesel fumes. Silica dust. Resin, solvent and paint vapours.
What is the main risk to this worker wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Breathing in harmful dust. Back injury from poor posture. Goggles misting up, limiting vision. Not being able to hear colleagues. What is the main risk to this worker wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Breathing in harmful dust. Back injury from poor posture. Goggles misting up, limiting vision. Not being able to hear colleagues. What is the most serious risk to this worker wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Breathing in harmful dust. Back injury from poor posture. Goggles misting up, limiting vision. Not being able to hear colleagues. Pigeon droppings and nests are found in an area where you are required to work. What should you do? Stop work, do not touch anything and seek advice. Carry on with your work carefully so you don't disturb them. Try to catch the pigeons so you can move them out of the way. Wait for the pigeons to fly away before carrying on with your work. How should water be used to reduce the level of dust when cutting concrete using a cut-off saw? Enough to wet the surface of the concrete before cutting. Constantly the whole time the concrete is being cut. Constantly until you are halfway through the concrete cut, then stop. Enough to make the first cut, then no more will be required. Before clearing up some rubble inside a building, why is it advisable to spray water on it? So it doesn't make a mess. To prevent dust clouds. To kill any insects in it. To save time. What should you do if you find lots of old bird nests and droppings in an area you are working in? Carry on working and work around them. Sweep them up and put them in a bin liner immediately. Stop working and speak to a supervisor to arrange for decontamination work. Check there are no live birds present, then carry on working. What best describes how workers should treat dust? Assume dust is safe if they are working outdoors. Assume dust is not safe wherever they are working. Assume dust is safe unless told otherwise. Assume dust is safe if they don't feel any ill effects. Which of the following is not an immediate health effect of being exposed to paints and resins which have high levels of solvents? Headaches and sickness, dermatitis or skin problems, muscular and skeletal disorders, drowsiness or poor coordination. Engine-driven equipment is being used in a deep excavation. Which of the following should be in place? Gas monitoring alarms, additional excavation covers, a vehicle marshal. Additional stop blocks. Who can enter a confined space? Only competent machine drivers who have the correct license. Anyone who has completed an apprenticeship. Only site managers and supervisors of the company. Anyone who is trained, competent and authorised. Which kind of personal protective equipment, PPE, can protect your lungs from harmful vapours? Goggles, hard hat, respirator, ear defenders.
Which material or substance is most likely to give off hazardous vapour? Dust, rubber, glue, wet concrete. What can cause occupational asthma? Exposure to rat urine whilst working. Exposure to loud noise on a regular basis. Skin contact with any hazardous substance. Breathing in hazardous dust, fumes or vapours. Exposure to which of the following is unlikely to result in lung disease? Asbestos. Silica dust. Strong smells. Bird droppings. Which item of personal protective equipment, PPE, is helping to protect the worker from nasal cancer? Asbestosis is associated with exposure to asbestos. Which part of the body does this disease affect? Hands, lungs, feet, brain. A construction worker has been exposed to concrete dust for a long period of time. What are they most likely to suffer from? Headache or migraine, blurred vision, hearing problems, shortness of breath. The chances of suffering from lung cancer are increased by what? Breathing in dust, vibration from power tools, exposure to sunlight, exposure to steam. When using a power tool to cut or grind materials, why should the dust be collected and not allowed to get into the air? Most dust can be harmful if breathed in. The tool will go faster if the dust is collected. To save time and avoid having to clear up the mess. A machine guard is not needed if the dust is collected. What potential disease is this worker unprotected from? Tetanus. Nasal cancer. Dermatitis. Skin cancer. Hydrogen sulfide is a gas given off by rotting organic substances. Which two statements are true about hydrogen sulfide? It can cause unconsciousness in a few breaths. It is dangerous because it can disable the sense of smell. It is a harmless natural gas. It is dark brown at room temperature. It can safely be detected by using a naked flame. Which one of the following is true of repeated exposure to small doses of dust? It can help to build up immunity. It is unavoidable and harmless. Any effects will be immediately apparent. The effects will build up over time. What should you do if you need special respiratory protective equipment, RPE, to handle a chemical, but no RPE has been provided? Sniff the substance to see if it makes you feel unwell. Start the work, but take regular breaks to reduce exposure. Do not start work until you have the correct RPE and training. Get on with the job, but try to work quickly to reduce exposure. If you have been given a dust mask to protect you against hazardous fumes, what should you do? Start work without a mask, but take regular breaks outside. Do the job wearing the mask, but work as quickly as you can. Do not start work until you have the correct respiratory protective equipment, RPE. Wear a second dust mask on top of the first one in order to increase the protection.
The seal between an item of respiratory protective equipment, RPE, and a worker's face is most likely to be affected by which two of the following? Beard growth. Wearing safety goggles. Sunlight. The wearer's age. Dust levels. Which two factors determine the appropriate type of respiratory protective equipment, RPE, to be used for a job? Whether the RPE is made of rubber or plastic. The amount of time since a hazardous spill. Whether the worker wants to wear RPE or not. The amount of hazardous substances in the air. The type of hazardous substance. Which two of the following are basic filter types used in respiratory protective equipment, RPE? Moisture filters. Smell or aroma filters. Sound filters. Dust or particle filters. Gas or vapour filters. Which one of the following statements about respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is true? Employers must supply it at cost when it is needed. Employers must supply it free of charge when it is needed. Workers should provide their own. Workers should share the cost with the employer. How should contaminated respiratory protective equipment, RPE, be considered when being disposed of? As recyclable materials as normal waste products, as compostable wastes, as hazardous waste. A particle filter is suitable for use in which one of the following situations? Presence of gases, an oxygen deficient atmosphere, when dust and fibres are in the air, presence of vapours. Why is it important to be clean-shaven when using a half-mask respirator? Facial hair can block the filter more quickly. You may suffer an allergic reaction to the mask. Facial hair can affect the seal around your face. You will be able to use the same mask for longer. Which of the following do you not need to do to ensure that someone's mask works? Check the mask is being worn correctly. Check the mask is the correct type needed. Check the mask under water to make sure the seals are tight. Check the user has passed a face fit test while wearing the mask. The seal of your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, can be broken by which two things? Facial hair. Facial scarring, makeup, a hearing aid, earrings. What is the most important consideration when wearing respiratory protective equipment, RPE? The weight is correct. It has a good seal. Being able to smell. It is the correct colour. If your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is a bad fit, which one of the following is most likely to happen? It will not protect you. It will break easily. It will filter more air. It will get damaged. How often is it good practice to carry out repeat face fit tests for respiratory protective equipment, RPE? on a regular basis, on an ad hoc basis, when starting a new shift pattern, when starting work on a different site. Respiratory protective equipment RPE fit tests should be carried out by whom? The worker who will carry out the work, a supervisor in compliance with the law. 
the manager overseeing the work. A competent person in compliance with the law. Planned work requires the use of a power tool to cut or grind materials. Select the two best ways to control the dust. Wet cutting. Wear a dust mask. Work slowly and carefully. Keep the area clean and tidy. Fit a dust extractor or collector to the machine. What must you do when using water to keep dust down when cutting? Ensure that there is as much water as possible. Make sure that the water flow is correctly adjusted. Pour water onto the surface before you start cutting. Get someone to stand next to you and pour water from a bottle. When drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding, what is the best way to protect your long-term health from harmful dust? Use dust extraction or wet cut and wear a dust mask. Wear FFP3 rated respiratory protective equipment, RPE. Wear any disposable respiratory protective equipment, RPE. Use dust extraction or wet cut and wear FFP3 rated respiratory protective equipment, RPE. What should you do if you run out of the water you are using to control dust? Stop and refill the water. Put on additional respiratory protection. Ask everyone to clear the area and then carry on. Carry on, but get someone to sweep up afterwards. Which of the following two options are likely to cause the most dust exposure? Using power tools without extraction. Using hand tools outside. Working with wet or damp materials. Working with dry materials. Using power tools with extraction. When working with materials creating dust, what should be monitored? The level of exposure to the dust. The color of dust created. The smell the dust creates. The direction in which the dust travels. Using water suppression to reduce dust will be most effective for which one of the following? Steel grinding. Cutting plywood sheets. Disc cutting steel. Pneumatic chiseling of concrete. Congratulations! You are a step closer to success. Keep learning until you reach your goal. You can find a link in the top right corner to go to the next video.